Konnichiwa, good afternoon, and as always, welcome to my new video. Yeah, probably should have created a better intro for a video like that. So the thing is, I usually film videos about topics that currently bother me a lot, and I'm like going throughout the week and I face something, and then I'm suddenly like, ooh, I want to reflect on that, I want to talk about it. But this thing has been bothering me not only for a week, but like for a month or so. So if you have been following me on Twitter, you probably know what I'm talking about because I've basically told the whole story on my Twitter. So it all started in August when I was in Japan and was texting my mom asking if everything is alright in there, if my dog is alright, if she's alright and everything. And she told me like there's something wrong happening to my dog, Irtish. Like he had this problem with his eyes, so it looked like weird, like he got an infection in it or something like that and he, she tried healing it but it didn't help and she also like didn't have enough time to take him to the vet so they could tell what this is usually he's like a very active energetic and aggressive dog so whenever we take him for a walk he like scares the shit out of like all the people, all the cats around and everything. Then she told me that he doesn't care about cats anymore, he doesn't care about anyone anymore. Doesn't meet her at the doorstep, he just like lays on his blanket and doesn't care about anything basically anymore. And I was like, okay, that's fucked up, like we're taking him to a vet as soon as I'm back. So when I arrived back home, uh, basically like the next week we took him to the doctor so they basically made some checkup with him they told us like well probably he had like caught an infection in his eye we need to kind of like heal it and it will be all right afterwards and we were like okay fine we got the medication so we were completely fine we were like okay he had his checkup he's basically all right he just needs to heal this thing and everything was going to be all right and the next night after that, my mom called me and she told me I don't know what's going on with him. He's like getting worse and worse and worse. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, what, what's going on? And she told me like, he's wandering around the house without realizing what he's doing. Like, before that, I haven't seen a single dog do stuff like he did. She basically told me that, that she had to like, lay him down against his will, like by force, and then he basically like fell asleep, fell asleep, and I was like, okay, that's kind of weird. We didn't really like realize what was going on, but we had our next checkup planned in two weeks time, so we decided that we wait till this time and we catch all his symptoms, and we like basically do another checkup in a row. Those two weeks were probably the worst weeks of my and my mom's life. I mean, he was actually like getting worse and worse and worse. When you see your dog basically becoming not your dog, like everything but your dog, something weird is going on with him and you have no idea what it is, but you also have no opportunity to take your dog to a vet sooner and you also kind of want to catch all the other symptoms to make the things clear. He didn't remember where the where our apartment is anymore. He didn't remember how to go for a walk. He didn't remember it all. All he did was strolling around the house every time. Strolling and strolling and strolling day by day, night by night and it just didn't stop. He wasn't just strolling around, he like forgot how to ask us to take him out for a walk. So he would poop around everywhere, he would pee around everywhere, and he didn't see it, that was the main problem, because he would walk around it and then take it everywhere. And like everything on the hallway was basically covered in dog shit and dog pants. We were seeing him getting only worse and worse and we understood that he doesn't understand shit anymore. He is just the body that moves around our house. All he did was reacting to his own name when we, every time we would call him, he would react to that, he would look at you for a second and then he would walk again. And what we found out later basically made me go crazy. We had our doctor's appointment, after that we told 
all the symptoms. And then the doctor told us like, yeah, it's actually something going on with his brain. So then it was even more stressful because he had to go through an MRI. And you know that if when people go through MRI, they don't need anesthesia to go through this. So they are just asked to not move and everything, but you can't ask animals to not move their head or anything. So they had to receive some anesthesia and pretty strong one. And then uh, they do the MRI and then he, they have to wake up. And we were kind of like terrified of that because the doctor told us like, there are cases that people do not wake up from anesthesia and you should be aware of that. And we signed a paper about like the fact that we are aware of that. And then they told us like, come back in like three hours and find out like, will tell you everything else. Me and my mom remember us driving home and uh, it was like the big, big traffic in there and we were stuck, we were listening to the radio. We had like three diagnoses about that. We had like infection in his brain that caused it all, that can be healed if we kill it and everything will be fine. We had elderly dog's dementia, which was unlikely for him because he's only like nine years old, he's not that old to get it. And then the last and not least is certainly the brain tumor. We go home, we drive home and realize that the most likely diagnosis is this freaking brain tumor. Neither me, neither my mom didn't want to talk about that and we were basically driving home in silence. I was kind of preparing myself for the worst because for the past like two weeks I was basically like going to bed in tears every freaking day because we were falling asleep and he was strolling around the house and we could not stop him and we could not make him feel better and neither me neither my mom could sleep properly and I would like cry every night because I would hear him walking even even though I moved from my room where I sleep to the different room where that is like further from the hallway but I would still hear him walking I would still like feel him feeling something wrong in him feeling this pain and i would feel so so helpless that i cannot help him that i cannot make him feel better anyhow anymore and i would just like walk towards him or my mom would do that and we would like try to force him to lay down and we would like pat him pat him pat him for an hour or two until he like his brain turns off and he falls asleep because he would be so so tired after that and then the doctor called me and he said like everything is all right like he's awake and you can like go and take him and then the suspense continued because we still didn't know the diagnosis and we still didn't know anything but because the doctor just told us like come back and i'll tell you everything that we found out and then we went to the room again and the doctor says, everything's all right, he survived the MRI, it was good to everybody, he barked a little bit even, he didn't like the vets to like touch him, to put him in the cage or anything, so we had to take him to another cabinet and we laughed a little bit of that because, well, that's our problematic dog, met him. Then he told us like, well, the results are not so good, he has a brain tumor. And the other thing that this brain tumor cannot be removed because it's in a really, really, like, picky spot where it's really, really possible, like, 99% that something will go wrong in this spot. And all I was realizing was that, fuck, yeah, we really got the worst we could get. And the next thing we ask, like, what do we do next? Like, what's our next move if we can't operate it? And then he told us that we can give him some medications till the end of his life that will help the brain to work normally. And then the first night he received the medications, I think his body was still adjusting to it. That's why it didn't work that fast. He was cautious, so he was like reacting to everything that's going on, but he would stroll around the house and he could not stop. So I would sit him down and he would basically cry because he wanted to move. And it was like helpless again because it was like, fuck, we, we tried this medication and it doesn't work. What do we do? Like, is this it? So nothing is working, nothing is helping him now. And now he's even worse because he realizes what's going on with him. I was blaming myself for every fucking time I did bad to him. I was blaming myself for every fucking time I didn't watch out for him. 
Like, I didn't do something I could have done when he was cautious, when he didn't have such a problem. And now I'm helpless against this fucking disease. I cannot help him. And it would make me feel so, so bad. A couple of days later, a miracle has happened. Honestly, he was drinking those medications and he would get better and better day by day. And we would see him, like, winging his tail and, like, barking at us and he we would see him like walking with his head held up high he would remember all his commands he would like play a little bit with us he stopped wandering around the house completely when you understand that he has to take his medications till the end of his days and they do have their own like side effects but it all doesn't matter that much you know when my grandpa was dying when my grandma was dying I was kind of sorry for the time I could not spend with them and I was like, fuck, well, I don't get this chance anymore, so they are dying. They won't be the same anymore. And I feel like this time someone just gave me another chance with my dog. I feel like I got this chance to relive it, to like fix my mistakes that I did. And I'm so thankful for that. It's just, it's just basically the first time in my life I got to do something like that. What's the point of this video, you ask? It's about having a chance to fix your own mistakes, you know? The brain tumor, it sounds like a diagnosis that you can't fight, you can't do anything with it. It's not always like that, like, the chances are miserable, but there are those chances, you know? We don't know how long he's going to live. From now on we don't know if this tumor will spread and will it like cause more side effects and will the meds stop working but all we know now is that we have this time with the dog we used to have and that we now have a chance to like fix everything towards him to fix our relationship to be like kinder uh, Give him more attention, give him everything he deserves right now. Do not lose your hope. In case you have the second chance, like, this should be like the happiest moment of, my, of your life because you get to like spend the best time of your life with your closest one and do not let it like be a memory, be a bad memory of you not giving enough love to someone closer to you. So now, it's basically so dark outside that you can't see my face, but sorry. So now I think we have to bring our star in here. How about I give you this one and then you come back to me. Okay, sit. And here is a dog that has a brain tumor. <laughs> would you believe that? I would. So, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you like, liked it and enjoyed it. Follow me on Twitter to catch up with the new updates and stuff and everything else like that. Also, follow me on Twitch because I held a first stream of my life ever this Friday and it was so crazy, it was so cool. Just follow the updates on my Twitter and on my Twitch and I would like to have fun with you and everything, so if you have some time, go check my channel out, please. Also, ask me some questions on my Ask account, which is www.ask.fm slash from Russia. I'll see you really soon in my next video and now we have to go for a walk he's going to poop i swear to god okay bye